Welcome to the land of milk and honey. I am a little bit under the weather, so excuse my voice if it gets a little dry. In this, we're going to go over why life is easy, and if you don't agree with that, we're also going to go with how you can make it easy. So let's get into it right now. So, I heard it once said by Confucius, life is really simple, but we insist on making it complicated. So how and why do we overcomplicate life? There are, there's so many reasons. There's, I mean, a lot of people have a thing for drama, logical addictions, uh, our needs, whether they're empowering us or disempowering us, the way we view our circumstances, uh, I, I could go on, just like uh, living in the past, complaining rather than getting it done, staying stuck in circumstances, you know, when you beat yourself up over something. Uh, there's so many things that just complicate things to where they don't need to be. And that's when our life starts to get a little bit out of control. And the big thing is, is that we really get addicted to negative thinking, negative circumstances, the drama in our life, it's easy to talk about with people, and it's really the cheap quickie when it comes to connection. Have you ever been around somebody that's just constantly talking about their problems? It's because while they may have good things to talk about, they know that while they're complaining about certain things, you're not going to shut them out. You're going to be like, oh yeah, you know, like, oh that sucks. It's a cheap way of getting connection with somebody. And a lot of us stay at the bottom because, you know, you can't fall too hard if you're already on the ground floor. And that thinking is very bad, and it is implanted in the back of our subconscious from different movies, different ideas, because, I mean, we've all heard that phrase before, or something along those lines. And the biggest problem that I had to overcome was sadness. I actually was addicted to sadness and I didn't realize it until I got out of the box and then turned around and looked back at it. Because I enjoyed being in that state and I didn't realize it. I fed off of it. I would look for things that made me sad and a lot of us can relate to that. And then, you know, you look back and you realize every song in your music library, whether it be on a CD, in your car, or on your phone, on your laptop, it's filled with sad music. That's why a lot of angry people listen to a lot of angry music. And a lot of sad people listen to depressing music. And so one of the first things that I did after I started to realize, you know, I'd get happier and then I'd come back down and the fall would suck. And so I'd just want to stay at the bottom. And then I became addicted to it until I came back out again. And then I realized certain things that were holding me down. Number one, it was a specific person. And so I obviously cut them out of my life, which is very hard for people to do. I understand that. But if you know that there's something that's hindering you, and you'll know, you'll think about it. As I'm talking about certain things, you know, an idea or a picture will pop into your head. And you know that's what you need to get rid of. But it's so great on the other side. And so that's the first thing that I got out. And then after that, I completely changed uh, the music I listened to. That was another big change. What you fill your head with is what you get in your reality. You know, I've said that before. And so if you're addicted to the whole sadness cycle, start eliminating all the things that keep you in that vibration. All the things that keep you down like that. Because it is very addictive. It's like a drug. It definitely has a different change of state, I'd call it. And what controls this type of thinking and behavior is a little bit on the subconscious mind and the things that we put into it already, as I've talked about before. And a bigger part is the paradigm which also holds our limiting beliefs, specifically our core limiting beliefs. And so what the paradigm is, I've talked about going over this later on in the future, so I'm going to hit a little bit of it right now. 
basically the paradigm is created through repetition and it's changed through repetition. Now, you probably haven't changed it since the first time that it was programmed. And so, if you've been getting the same results and you're wondering why your life is always this way, don't worry, it's not even your fault. You've been programmed. You've been programmed to think a certain way. And when you are programmed to think a certain way, your actions, your decisions, and your responses and reactions all turn out into it. And then that's how you get the same type of lifestyle over and over and over and there's no change. Every single one of your actions and thoughts will fall into harmony with your paradigm, whatever that may be. And so from the moment you were born in this world, you were molded by the darkness, quote unquote. And so whoever you were living around or whoever was around you, whatever they were saying, this is why people say don't curse in front of a baby or don't do this in front of a baby. It's because they don't have their conscious faculties developed yet. And so you have free roam to put whatever you want into this baby subconscious. If you grew up in a rich and very powerful family, you'll probably grow up to be rich and powerful. If you grew up in a bilingual family, you'll probably grow up and be bilingual. If you grew up in a house that everybody went straight through college and had a great life, you'll probably go through college and have a great life. If you grew up in a house full of broke people who never finished high school, you'll probably never finish high school. It's all programming. And it's really the basis of how we live our life and the decisions that we make. And this is the paradigm. And so the paradigm really does hold us back if we don't know how it works. But it's great when we know how it works. And how do we even change the paradigm? There's a few ways. Uh, Trauma is a big way. Uh, usually after something very big happens, you change your way of thinking when somebody very important to you dies or, you know, a loved one leaves you, uh, you know, all kinds of things that can just, you know, smack to the brain type of stuff. Um, taking on the beliefs of what we want. Like I said in the past video, if you want to become a millionaire, start adopting the same ideas as a millionaire, start reading their books. Uh, the filtration of thoughts with new beliefs As I've said before, filtering out those conscious, positive, and negative thoughts. Obviously, empowering thoughts would be positive, as well as disempowering would be negative. So if you're already doing that exercise like you should, you should start to see how life is pretty easy. Because, I mean, we all really do skate by through life pretty easily. You may have worse circumstances than me or somebody else at different tiers or levels, But you've made it here today with the way you've made it. I mean, it's easy to skate by. Uh, The economy's set up to take care of its weakest link. It's set up to be that way. I mean, it takes no particular skill to make a living in this country anymore. This is America, if you're here. And so this is why life is actually really easy. We just make it complicated. Like, really think about it. Think about where you are right now and what you've done to get where you are right now. It was pretty easy. Because it's happened, it's passed, and unless you're still dwelling on it, you agree with me. And another thing that makes life chaotic and overcomplicated is stress, like I've talked about. And being very busy will cause you to be very stressful. And a lot of us look at being busy as being productive, like you're getting something done. You see, you could be 24 hours around the clock... And get less done than somebody else who's utilizing about six hours. It's not, it's, it's how, it's how you spend your time. Your productivity is everything. That's why people at businesses will pay more for somebody who can do the same job quicker than somebody else doing the same job longer. And especially if the guy that's doing it in shorter amount of time is also doing a better job. He's definitely getting paid more. There's a value in him. And that is the reflection of money. Your value, the value you put into your job, your community, the planet, wherever you are, whatever you're trying to do, is what you will get in return. You do really reap what you sow. And to get back to the subconscious. And so 
the easiest way to change the paradigm is to do it the same way it was created, through repetition. The repetition of information, keep putting the same thing in there. This is why Bob Proctor and all those other get-rich gurus will tell you to do affirmations, all the I am's, all the I am wealthy, I am rich, I have lots of money coming to me from different sources all the time. Because as you say these, it'll get into the subconscious. Now, you have to do that basically a thousand times a day, every day for like 90 days, as Bob Proctor says in one of his videos. And while for some people that works very well, I have to say that the easiest way that I did it was embodiment, completely assuming the position of what I wanted, taking the beliefs from the types of people that have already achieved what I want to achieve. And so that's the easiest two ways to change it, is to take your conscious thoughts, all these I am's, and keep repeating them until the subconscious eventually gets it, and then it'll manifest into your reality things that will correspond with the thing that you're wanting, or taking on the beliefs or assuming the position of that which you seek. Like I said in the last video, if you want to be an all-star athlete, you can't be an all-star athlete from the couch in your living room. You've got to work out. You've got to go practice all the time and, I mean, literally get your head into the game. And so when you change your mind, that's when your reality changes. And life really is easy. It's just how you make it. What you put your mind to as well as what you don't put your mind to. See, they both correspond with each other. And a big thing that people put into their minds, and seriously, this is the worst habit for everybody. And the moment you drop it, everything gets better. It's these two words that keep people very, very poor all the time. I'm broke. Like, fuck. That is the worst thing to say. Even though you may have 12 cents in the bank, even though you just bought, you know, two dollars and 14 cents in gas even though you might be 10 grand in debt and nothing in the bank don't say i'm broke because that's another affirmation that keeps getting in the subconscious and then thus reality will bring you know something to match that command it's an input output system that's that's really all it is And so you might be thinking like, you know, what do, like, what do I say rather than I'm broke? Well, any situation that you're saying I'm broke, you might be talking to yourself, but most of the time you're around someone else and they might want to do this or you might check your phone and you want to, you know, go back to complaining and talking about problems as the cheap connection quickie. And you're like, oh, I'm so broke right now. You'll hear someone just talk about that out of, you know, out of thin air, like for no reason. And it's just another affirmation. And instead of saying that, like if someone wants to go out and eat with you and you want to tell them, oh, sorry, I can't, I'm broke. You might as well just say, you know, my bank account won't allow it for, at the moment, you know, something very different than I'm broke. Or you could just say, you know, uh, not right now is a good time. And, you know, how about Friday? How about next Wednesday? Something like that. And so, like, seriously, like, shit. Stop saying I'm broke. Just doing that, I want to know after three months of doing that, how that's doing for you. So if that does good, please leave a comment. I'd like to hear about that. And as soon as you change your mind, you'll notice that the results in your life will change the circumstances in your life will change. This is all on changing your point of view because a little bit of that point is your paradigm. Now as much as I'd love to have a video specifically just on the paradigm, there's plenty of it online that you can look up. I'll put a link in the description to a Bob Proctor video that was recommended from one of my mentors actually. And we'll see how that goes. I will for you all to prosper and have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.